Greetings, friends. We are going to walk through today the perfect 10 out of 10 resume for a professional who is in the middle of their career. So we're talking anywhere from really five years to like 20, 25 years into your career. It kind of depends where you're at, what you've done, but there's a pretty big range here and this is applicable to more or less everyone in that range. So let's just start from the top. Obviously, we're going to put our name uh, hopefully you have a cool name like this, but your your real name is totally fine. Then we want to hit them with a nice professional title. So I've picked two here that I really like for mid-career that focus on the two most important things that you need to be able to do at this stage of your career, which is contributing to strategy and managing people. These are things we want them to see right away and associate with our name, which is why we put them right there under our name. Next, we will dive in with a quick professional summary. So again, we're going to talk about our leadership abilities. We're going to talk about our strategic skills. We're going to talk in more detail about how we use leadership and strategy to drive things forward and make successful changes for our organizations for which we are working. Now, we will also talk about, this is very important, our ability to collaborate with senior leadership. This is something that we want to do, especially if we are looking to move up in our career. Anyone at the middle of their career should be relied upon to connect and collaborate with senior leadership at some point throughout their career journey. Okay, getting into a little more detail here. Obviously, we've got our education. Uh, the years can go once we're about 10, 15 years off. So this one is about due to go, actually. And then we want to get into some career highlights, something to kind of get them excited to see the rest of our resume and give them sort of an overview. Now, either in the professional summary or our career highlights, it's really important to showcase how many years experience we have doing this thing that they want us to be able to do. So I like to at least mention that once. Here we have eight years of leadership experience. That is great. Uh, Cross-functional teams is a phenomenal keyword for anyone in the middle of their career because most likely we're going to be either leading or working with cross-functional teams. Uh, then, of course, expertise is where we're going to get into, again, high-level things that we are good at that help the company to succeed. So in this case, revenue growth being like a you know, bottom-line goal for most companies. Talent development is getting the people around you to work well. Workflow delegation, same kind of thing, but in a different function. Then, the most important part, the way we describe the jobs that we've had. So, you can see here, we do have a little overview under each job. And what's important and useful here, we explain where we fall in the organization. So, who are we reporting to and what are we responsible for? And that kind of sets the context for the bullet points that we're going to give them shortly thereafter. Now, this is something a lot of people skip out on. I wouldn't recommend skipping out on this piece because setting that context is a very important for someone to understand how you helped the organization to succeed. Now, another thing you might want to put in these overviews is if you do not have an employer that has a clear sort of purpose or function, like we know Greg's Ice Cream Factory exactly what it does, we know what Ariana's Candy Shop is all about, if you work for Nike or Google, people know what that is, but if you work for an employer that doesn't say what they do in the name, or maybe one that people haven't heard of, you might want to explain that in our little overview section here as well. Now, when we get into the bullet points, this is where we win or lose. Everything else we've done is to get people to read these bullet points, which is hard. And what we want to do in this bullet point section is give them our best accomplishments. Ideally, we will plug in as many numbers here as possible. Sometimes those numbers are going to quantify our accomplishments, as you can see here, we are reducing time to value, we are uh, decreasing bottlenecks, we're increasing customer satisfaction. These are measurable things, and the more measurable accomplishments you have in your bullet points, the better. Because as a hiring manager is reading this, they have a list of things they need to know that you're good at, and these bullet points make it very clear that you are good at the things you're talking about on your resume. So this puts them at ease when they wonder, will you actually be able to deliver if I hire you? Well, you can tell them here, you delivered in your last job. You delivered extremely well. So most bullet points, where we can, we want to show accomplishments. Now, that's not realistic for every single bullet point. Don't put a ton of pressure on yourself. In this example, we have probably a few more quantifiable points than others might have. 
but sometimes we're just gonna share things like the amount of people. So we supported 30 customers per day, great. Uh, we won uh, customer service team member of the year four consecutive years. Again, a great accomplishment. And then sometimes we're just gonna list some more stuff that we did and that's okay as well. But the more we can quantify our accomplishments, the better. Now, at the middle of your career, you may have a two-page resume. I want to put this rumor to bed. Two-page resumes are totally fine, especially at the middle of your career. Entry level, sometimes we do want to keep it to one page. Sometimes the company is going to tell us if they want one page, but almost everyone should be creating a two-page resume at this point. Now, I didn't put a second page in the example because you'd just be looking at more of the same, specifically more jobs because you've had a longer career. Now, that is the 10 out of 10 resume for a mid-career professional, my friends. I would highly recommend you take a look through. I have linked to the uh, template that you're looking at here down below. This is my most popular template. I would love to see you check it out. I also have some free templates available at that same link. So go have a look, see what you like. Make sure your resume is looking professional and eye-catching as well as being ATS friendly. Now. That is not all of my advice, but that is a lot of my good advice. If you want to see some other great advice on resume writing, I would highly recommend, excuse me, here I am back in the middle, I'd highly recommend checking out my other videos, which I have linked here. I hope to see you over there. Good luck, my friends.